Alright, so as the title of this video says, it is a Patreon request from Justin Smith, who requested that I do The Green Inferno. So, let's talk about it. This is from Eli Roth, a director who seems to get a lot of hate, kind of like M. Night Shyamalan. I don't understand it. I think all his movies are decent, at least decent to good to great. Uh, my favorite is Cabin Fever. I think that movie is hilarious. The pancake scene is iconic to me. I even got a shirt that says pancakes. That's how much I like it. So this is another decent film in his filmography. It's not my favorite, and I'll get to my problems later on that I have with it. But I just don't think it's de I don't think it's deserving of the thirty percent or some shit on Rotten Tomatoes. It's not that bad. Um, but anyways, what is this movie about? It is about these uh, saving the rainforest activists. These college kids they go to Peru. Yeah, Peru. And they're going to try to save the rainforest, but then their plane crashes, and then they are captured by a local tribe there, a cannibal tribe that eats them. <laughs> eats them one by one and chops them up in grisly ways. It is very gory, which will take me to my first positive for this movie, is that the effects work in this film is top-notch. You got K and B, at least two-thirds of them. I think it was just two of them. Uh, I forget which one. I think Kurtzman was not involved, but Nicotero and Howard uh, Berger... Uh, Burger, <laughs> uh, they were involved in the effects in this movie. The gore is fantastic. This movie is just very disgusting. It's all about the shock value of what's going on, just seeing these people getting ripped limb by limb. And it's disgusting in other ways too, like diarrhea in one scene. It's just vile. So if that's your thing, I think you'll enjoy this movie. And there's a couple of good humorous moments in the film. Some people might not not like having humor in their horror, but it the overall tone is still very serious, but I think this movie kind of needed those couple of funny moments because otherwise the whole film would just be miserable because it's a very serious, dark film, what's happening to these characters, and it's just, it's not a very rewatchable movie because of it. It's just, it's not an entertaining movie. It's disgusting and just very dark and just what they're doing, the torture there. It's not as torturous as other Eli Roth movies, but still, man, it's, it's rough. I thought the lead actress was good. Uh, unfortunately, she's the only one giving a good performance. Everyone else is meh or awful. And I'll talk about that a little bit more later on, but I thought she was solid. And I like where they shot this movie, the locations that were used, the atmosphere of the film. It makes you feel like you're there with them. I think they shot this probably in South America, if I had to guess. They really make you f feel like you're in the... Amazon jungle. Now for my dislikes, I really don't like some of the acting in this movie. There's a lot of weak performances here, especially from characters who luckily are only in it a little bit. One character is only in like the opening, like first 20 minutes, and then another character is like killed off first, so th thankfully. Um, but yeah, even some of the other characters, just the other actors, they're just not that good. And the main antagonist of this movie is really one of the rain, Save the Rainforest people. It's not even the Campbell tribe. They really make this one guy, Alejandro, the antagonist. But I feel like they just did it too much. They kept trying to make him so evil. It, just, it was just a little over the top how fucking cruel this guy was to his own friends and pals. Like He's just a manipulative, asshole, selfish son of a bitch. And I can't stand him. And, spoiler, this fucker lives. Like, really? No. You don't purposely make a, a villain in this character, someone that you're rooting for that get killed horribly like these other people, and then have that character live to, to see another day and to see another sequel that they set up at the very end. I don't think so. And even all the other characters I didn't care for at all, except for the lead character. She's the only one I kind of root for. But outside of her, I didn't give a shit about anybody. You don't really get to know them. They just spend the first act of the movie setting up their plan on what they're going to do. And we don't spend time with any of them. So you're just here to watch them get killed in vicious ways and not root for any of them. I'm only caring for the lead and that's it. And that kind of bugs me. I wish that we could have gotten to know some of these other people. Why do they have to be so forgettable and then make this one guy such an asshole and then not kill him like these people are so hollow plus they're the kind of people that i just despise people who are just constantly whining and protesting 
There's one scene involving CGI. I mean, there's other scenes like the plane crash that has some CGI in it, but the the noticeable CGI was the ants towards the end. They show that for way too long, and it does not look that good. They even, like, they knew it didn't look that good because they even, like, like, blur it some. Another thing that bugged me was the ending, and I'll talk about it in my spoiler discussion, what this ending is, but that just kind of bugged me. Um, and the end credit scene setting up a sequel that we are probably never going to get. Like, I just don't like that end credit scene either. So, final thoughts. Uh, not my favorite Eli Roth movie, but at least it's got some kick-ass gore and a good lead actress in it. And it's a love letter to cannibal films of the 70s and 80s. And that's really all I got to say about it. It's just a, it's a torturous chop them up and eat them kind of film. So when it comes to the Green Inferno, maybe consider streaming this, borrowing it from a friend, or renting it at Redbox. Alright, spoiler discussion. So, in the opening, Justine is on a hunger strike with all her other loser buddies. Uh, hunger strike sounds terrible. That just sounds awful. Have you ever been hungry for even, like, half a day? Could you imagine starving yourself for a few days? Just a protest? Like, that's just the definition of hell. And so... Her blonde friend, played by some singer, which explains her terrible acting, is very un-PC. She says, like, it. her dialogue is very Eli Roth. It's very, it's very cabin fever. Like, she's saying that everything's gay and retarded. So that's just very Eli Roth. But, yeah, I like her character. I don't like her acting. And so, and, you know, thankfully she's not in the rest of the film. She is just the one friend saying you shouldn't go and she should have listened to her and then this scene just cut it out it's not even necessary i thought they were going to do something else with it but they didn't the whole like tarantula biting that guy in the dick like did we really need to see his dick and balls in his hand like as he's pissing and then the tarantula getting close and then biting it and then why would he tell his friends that tarantula bit his dick like you just you're just inviting laughter at your expense like he goes back, he's like, a tarantula bit my dick. Almost bit my dick off, he said. I don't think a tarantula can actually bite your dick off. Unless it's like one of those spiders from the beyond, then maybe it could, you know? <laughs> but, like, I would just keep that to myself, personally. I would not let people know what the hell just happened. I don't know. But he shoots the tarantula three times, really. And they even, like, why would you hand that idiot a gun in the first place? Like, this whole scene, just take it out. This movie is an hour and 40 minutes, and it could have been an hour and 30, honestly. You could have cut some of this. And so then her lock doesn't work. They're tying themselves to the trees, the tree huggers. Uh, and her lock doesn't work. Was that supposed to happen? It's just a question I have. It's not really all that important. But because this happens, they're able to take her away from the tree and put her at gunpoint. But they could have done that anyways had, she, had the lock been working properly. They could have still held the gun to her head. But... Was that supposed to happen? Was the lock supposed to, like, malfunction? I don't know. Just a question. All right, so then this moron. After the plane crashes, very brutal plane, plane crash, kind of reminded me of Victor Crowley. You, you even got, like, the tree going through the windshield, knocking the guy's head, like, halfway off. Pretty gnarly stuff. But this idiot gets out of the plane and just starts walking towards the fucking fan, like, the propeller blade. Like, Lisa, where are you? And then walks right into it, like, what a moron. And then there was even, like, some CGI there, too, when you see his body on the ground. Why was that necessary? It looked bad. If that wasn't CGI, I'd be shocked. So, anyways. So, then, the other bad actress in the movie, she gets the arrow right through her throat as she's, like, yelling for help. Like, help us! And then, so, then the only somewhat likable character of the movie gets the worst death, and he's the first one to get chopped up by this cannibal tribe. He, he gets his eyes gouged out, he gets his arms and legs chopped off one by one, and he's just screaming and screaming, but then by, like, the second limb being cut off, he's just not screaming anymore, but he's still alive, he's, like, twitching, so it just adds to the horror of the scene, knowing that he's still alive, but he's just in so much pain and shock that he, he's not even screaming anymore, I don't know, like, he passed out from it, because you would pass out at some point, and they even cut his tongue out, too, right before that. That was fucking brutal. And so then we find out that it was all a PR stunt. Like, they weren't saving shit. 
You know, they were just helping out some competing company. They wanted to get this company out of the rainforest so that this other bulldozer company could get in there. So, you know, it's all bullshit. And they're not cannibals 24-7. They're not eating people every day. We see that they actually have livestock. They have farm animals that they're, you know, raising there. They have cows and chickens and all kinds of shit. So I like that they show that to show that, you know, they're eating other stuff. They're not just eating humans all the time. And the only reason why they're eating them, I think, is because of the suits they're wearing. In which case, why didn't they just take it off? You know, he says, like, they think we're the enemy. You know, they think we're working for the companies that are bulldozing their lands. Like, well, then why don't you take the fucking outfit off and try to explain it to them? And if they could read, this movie would have been over a lot quicker. Because they would have read the shirt that said, hashtag, save the rainforest. If they could have read that, then they would have been like, oh, these aren't bad guys, you know. Maybe they still would have ate them anyways, who knows. Um, but yeah, I love that when the other girl gets killed, and they feed her to their friends, and they don't know it until they see, like, the tattoo, very wrong turn to that one scene. And the the girlfriend, they were, they were like, there was like a lesbian couple, and since, since, since her girlfriend's dead, she's like, I can't live no more. So she breaks the bowl and slits her own throat, slices it wide open, and dies instantly. Not realistic. I don't think that would happen. You would slowly bleed out. And then Alejandro just starts jerking himself off. Um, I'm not sure what he's using for lubrication. He's spitting on it. It sounds like he's got something on it, and it sounds like he's jerking off faster when he's being strangled by his best friend, who's like, you son of a bitch, I'll kill you. His acting's terrible, too. Every time he's, like, mad, he does not sound mad at all. Even later on, he's like, you son of a bitch, I'm gonna kill you, I'll kill you, oh, I'm so mad. He's terrible. But yeah, it just, listen to it again, listen closely, when he's choking his friend who's jerking off he starts to jerk off faster you can hear it it's pretty funny and then then the other they so the girl who slits her throat they put weed right down her throat into her stomach and then when they eat her and cook her they get high and then they get the munchies so then therefore they start eating the redheaded dude and he's like they got the munchies and he starts getting eaten alive what a terrible way to go that is seriously at the top of the list of worst ways to die, being eaten alive, whether it's a human or a creature, drowning, burning to death, it's all up there. Terrible. So scary. And I don't, are they, like, trying to recruit this woman? Like, why are they, like, they're doing, like, the F, what do they call it? FGM, you know, female genitalia mutilation. They're acting like she's one of them. So are they going to keep her alive, I wonder? I don't know. Just a question. Another thing. Like, who knows what would have happened had she just let them do their thing? Would, would they recruit her? Why? If they think she's the enemy. And just because she has, like, this flute necklace, it, like, creates this bond with this kid, and therefore he lets her go just because she played a little bit of music in one moment. Really? That just seems like a writing convenience. Like, we need to find out a way to get this girl out a second time, and this is the only thing they could come up with. And it's like, okay, whatever. And then I love that she like rips the nose bone right out of that chick's mouth or you know, out of her nose, I mean. And that chick was pretty huge for a cannibal. Like she was the biggest woman there. Everybody else there was skinny, but this woman was pretty big. So she's eating the most. I did like that they had the bodies that they found at the plane crash site. They had them on sticks like in Cannibal Holocaust with like the sticks going up their ass. But in in this movie, they don't have it going out their mouth like in Cannibal Holocaust. I thought that was a weird decision. Like, why? Like, if you're going to go for it, go for it. Go all the way through, out their mouth. Just like in Cannibal Holocaust, which is what this movie is a tribute to. It's the inspiration. Did the kid understand Daniel when he said, you know, kill me? He's begging for her to end his misery. He, like, slits his throat as if he understood. But there's no way he did because... Nobody else in that tribe understands what they're saying, but you're telling me this little kid can speak English? Why is that? So I'm guessing it's just a coincidence, or maybe he just read the situation. Like, I'm thinking this is what he's saying, and I'm going to kill him. So, and then the militia, who was the enemy at the beginning of the movie, is now the heroes. They're the heroes that are saving the day, and but she, for some reason, is still trying to say that they're the enemy at the very end. So 
the militia saves her. They take her back to an embassy. They fly her back home. And then she's on camera saying that the cannibal tribe saved her and they weren't cannibals and that it was the militia that killed all her friends. Something like that. It's like, really? The militia chopped up your friends? Aren't they going to find the evidence that would say otherwise that clearly they're cannibals? I mean, there's evidence all over that tribe. They had heads on spikes. They, I mean, one look at that place, you're like, yeah, these are fucking cannibals. They're murderers, clearly, you know? So she's lying through her teeth, and I don't get it. Like, why would you defend those fuckers? Oh, because some kid protected you? Some little kid because you played a flute song? No. Like, she, like, this scene is not necessary. I just, I would take it out also. Just let the audience think that she made it home and that she ratted them out. But no, she is protecting them for some reason. Uh, I, I just don't get it. And then we get this really dumb dream sequence. It's very Eli Roth. <laughs> it's like Alejandro shows up. He's like, I made it. And then she has like these fucking razor teeth all of a sudden and bites his neck and then wakes up. Like that's her nightmare is finding out that he's still alive. And then she gets a phone call from Alejandro's sister saying that I, I saw a satellite image of my brother. He's still alive. And I want answers because you lied. Like you said that he was dead. So we're going to go get him and you're going to help me. And that's going to be the next movie them doing a rescue mission to save some asshole that we all went dead, that, that's a sequel that's never going to happen. So, yeah, I don't like the ending. That's the big letdown of this film is the ending and the characters not really being all that likable. So, anyways, those are my thoughts on The Green Inferno. What did you think about this movie? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you like what you've seen here, you can hit this like button and become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds. And remember, it's just an opinion. You don't need to get butthurt about it.